Hey, what's up? It's Liv. So, more or less, I've reached my end game, so to speak. So, we now have a very easy way to access the keyboard on Linux, right? On GNU slash Linux, let's say. <laughs> right? So, just the, the disclaimer here, obviously this is not going to work on a remote desktop, but uh, if you use a remote desktop, um, honestly, you have the more specific use case. You need the specific solution, not the general purpose one. So, you know, go deal with that yourself. But anyhow, if you're running X locally, like you should, then this is just good enough. Um, and the reason why is uh, solely because uh, the way that we find the window, because we do not create a window ourselves, we are using an already existing window, this means we need to, to grab one within the, the process hierarchy that uh, our program belongs to. This means walking up uh, the, the process ID chain, which means uh, having a association between PID and the window itself. Um, I don't. I don't really think you can do that on a remote desktop. So you know, that's the point against it, not against my solution of a problem. That aside, I've went ahead and made it so more aspects of the keyboard handling are dynamic. What do I mean by that? The way this used to work was that these uh, these uh, keys array which is just uh, an array containing the, the state of, uh, of the keys you want, uh, used to be uh, static memory, right? So it, it was a static array. And the way we size that was through... Let me go into the folder here. The way we sized that array was through uh, this key map right here. And we have... Uh, the list of keys declared by your key map. Now, the problem with this is, any time you want to use a different uh, a different uh, key combination, right? So, but and what do I mean by key combination? So, uh, the keys that your program uses would be different, right? Any time you have that situation, you really do need... Let me just... Uh, I love this music, but let me get the volume down. Okay. Sorry, Jeremy. Anyhow. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to drown it off completely. Because it's beautiful. Anyhow. Uh, what I was saying is, uh, if... If your program doesn't use a key, that key will not appear on this uh, enum, right? This brings a problem uh, that if the, the keyboard module itself is dependent on that layout, then you need to recompile this module any time you want to use a different layout, which, uh, you know, it's not that terrible, like, it'll compile just like that. But, um, you know, it's moving files around and, and it's a whole ordeal. So I said, no, you know what? No, I'm not going to do it. So what's the solution? Basically, um, we're just going to be passing these things around, okay? So what we, use, what we did uh, before was we just passed the file descriptor to it. So this would be standard in most of the time. So this would be uh, the file from which we would read the, at least on the, um, on the legacy, you know, quote-unquote legacy virtual uh, console uh, mode of the, the keyboard. We would read from standard in or some other file, um, but it needs to be a TTY, right? So a file descriptor to a TTY from which we can get keyboard input. I all, so that I left it there because of legacy reasons. I still want this to work on the virtual console. And 
what I did is I added these. So this is like the common says key table data. And what does that mean? So keylay is a, an array of, um, of the key IDs that you have, right? And it looks something like this. Uh, that's the... Uh, oh, yeah, I just showed you this. Okay, so it's, it's this bit, right? So it's a translation table. And basically what it does is uh, it just lists all uh, 127 plus 1 keys if I'm not mistaken and um, it gives a 0 to keys that are not used and an uh, index to the keys that are and so you can take the key code and use it and use it as an uh, index into this uh, array if you get a non-zero value, that means you have a, a valid key press which needs to be processed and then the event handling takes off from there. So what I thought is, well, would be nice if we just, because this file is just entirely generated from the uh, appropriately named uh, extensionless key map. But here's the thing, uh, this is like a very complex piece of uh, of code and the only thing you really want to change is this bit right so this is where you define the keys that your program uses and then the the ti i'll, I'll explain this later okay yeah, i promise i pinky promise i'll explain the ti later but the general keys like the standard keys you define here and you can as well um Okay, so let, let me let me back 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 up a little. Okay, so the way it works is like this: you say, okay, so this is the name of the key. This is the name that it uses from the. Let me just open up <laughs> this thing so I have a bunch of files. Okay, so see uh, keyboard lay, and as you see, you have uh, a, a bunch of. Um, of keys labeled here right so you just pick one of these names and you put it and you pass it here so i want this key from the from the layout and here you put you pass in the i think this one is the release one no it's on down on up on held it should be the it should be the other way around it should be on down on held on up but uh you know what let's fix that right now okay so and let's actually label this correctly so this is on tap on hell on rail right so on tap so the first time you press the key and never again right until you you let go and press it again on hell which is what happened a function that that's callback that uh, that's get well called when you hold the key down and on release so another callback which uh, gets cold when you let go and basically what you do is uh, you can you can simply write the code as it is as a string right or you can um, you can write one of these key files which is simply it's basically a, a place where you can just write some C code and put these labels on it right so on tap and it they need to the the tags need to be on this order just just to make uh, my life easier okay um so basically you put on tap and whatever c code you write here will be pasted as the as this field over here right and that's basically what uh, this uh other key file is doing okay so if um, if the code you you need uh, your key to run is uh, a little bit more complex, you can just uh, put that into a file. Okay, and you know it's kind of nice because you get to have like the like the tree the the tree callbacks in one place. So it's I guess it 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 does lead to you having a lot of small files, which is a little bit of a problem. Like, I, ca I can see this being a little bit of a pain, uh, so we'll see about uh, making it a little bit easier to work with, right? So perhaps we can have, like, a single file and all of the keys within it. Uh, I will just have to find a way to 
sort of have like a separator kind of like this and where you can just say okay so up next is another another key right so you could have something like i don't know key name here right and then the on tap on hell on rail and so forth and so on and so forth but i'm not gonna do that now because it's uh, it's it's it, it's beyond the scope of uh, of this session okay but it, it's uh, just throwing it out there's something we can do and then the ty and why did i close the the other window i actually need to show you this so i i think you promise i would show you okay so within the keys folder this is what i put all of the all of the uh key map generating uh files in so uh we have this ti file and basically what it does is it gives you okay so name of key and then the characters that this key needs to produce uh, when it's uh, like, like the lowercase version, let's say, when you hold down shift and when you hold down uh, alt, right? So the this one alt, the right alt. I don't know what it's called, um, but you you you, you can change uh, which one is it. If uh, if it's different, uh, uh, you you can do it. That's not a problem. So and the way you do that, since I'm uh, showing you that, so here in RDTI, I think no, it's TI Funk. Okay, so let's search for that. Okay, right. So you can just change it here. If uh, you don't have a right alt key, you can just put left alt. And if you want to put uh, control in it you can do it as well right so you can just um you can just put whichever key you you like there that's 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 all well and good so uh oh yeah and one thing uh you can put any key here long long as that key is defined in here right so you you actually need to to be explicit about this uh which modifiers you are using okay so your key map in the sense of uh, of the of the keyboard uh, system what it defines is which keys is your program using right which keys is your program using and the callbacks that these um uh, uh, that these keys invoke okay and this one goes on the on release field right so okay okay good uh what else uh, am i missing here because I'm, I'm trying to explain all of this um maybe just just as a note to myself right so I, so it, it's some doc documentation, right? It's at least in the form of a, of an informative video, right? <laughs> so uh, the thing here is, um, what I want to do now is, and I've been thinking about this, and I kind of, uh, like, I don't like the idea, but uh, I know that I need to do this. Uh, I want to sort of... Um, make all of this uh let's say uh backend code right so all of these uh generation helpers uh make these uh like uh, like a module right i'm gonna make them like a package like a pearl package and um and so when you when you make a program utilizing uh my keyboard handling all you have to do is define this array right all you have to do is uh, well make your key files your ti file if you need that and then just um i have to say <laughs> i'm sorry i uh, i i keep getting uh i keep i keep getting loss of focus sorry so all you have to define is this array uh your your key files and your if you have any or and your ti file if you have any and then everything else you don't even have to to see it right so you can modify it if you want right so you can still do that uh, you can 
just do whatever but if you don't want to to be tinkering around with the with the guts of the of the code generation you can just uh send the these uh, these parameters and it will generate the key map for you and then what you can do is just like i'm doing here you just include the key map include the keyboard and uh, then everything you have to do to initialize is just this bit right so yeah that's that uh, you need to pass in uh, and you know what I mean I, I don't want to make it so like I'm pretty sure I do want to but um, I mean I would hard code it so that the file descriptor is always standard in I'm not doing that because I figure maybe maybe just maybe there is a way to hook up uh, some other tty through file descriptors it's not something i've ever fucked with right it's not something i've ever fucked with but i know i know that maybe some crazy guy over there is gonna have an idea on how to do something crazy like that and he's gonna hate me if i remove this bit okay so but but anyhow all you have to do is pass uh your standard in whatever whatever that is the file the file uh yeah the fd of your standard in and call this macro and all of the all of the generated key map stuff is just passed to the constructor uh by that macro and i i will show you that so uh here it is right so it's very very simple so in order for this to work obviously you need to include key map dot h before you include keyboard dot h that that's the only caveat right i mean well though now that i think about it uh not really not really uh if, if both f right 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 no forget about it the include order doesn't matter right the include order does not matter long as they are both included long as they are both included and then you call this right and then you paste this macro then it should work okay we clear all right so now moving on um another part of uh, making this thing more dynamic uh is that uh the the callbacks uh, the, the the key callbacks need to be um you need to be able to swap them out at runtime, right? Because else we, I would have to hard code them, uh, which is not what I want. Okay, so for that end, we have the key call uh, function here. And all that does is just, um, so there's three arrays. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, let's, yeah, okay, so this, these three arrays, right? They're uh, dynamically allocated because we do not know at compile time what the key count will be. So that's a trade-off, but it's not it's not that big of a deal. And so, and these are, um, well, I, I think I think I have already told you what nihil is, right? But it's a void pointer to a uh, Sorry, void pointer. It's a pointer to a void function taking void arguments. That's a nihil. It's my own. It's my own nomenclature. I get to make the rules. No. <laughs> Anyhow. So you have such a function. You can uh, store it in one of these. And the way it works is you just uh, take the the name of your of your uh, of your key. And you append a uh, oops and you append a uh, key and the name of your key and the name is uh, what you set it to here right so you can so you get to decide what your calls are what your keys are called what your calls are ca what your calls are keys no what your keys are called and so for instance here it would be uh, the index corresponding to the escape key and so if uh and so well basically this is what happens uh, 
it will load the index corresponding to um, um, to one of these arrays, right? So zero would be tap, one would be held, and um, and two would be uh, release. Or is it? Yeah. Um. Yes, yes, yes. It would be. But why am I ending it with three? Um. That's that's not correct. That's not correct, actually. It should be um, mode less or equal to, to two. No, actually. No, right, what am I thinking? No, 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 no. Um, I cannot I cannot easily bounce check this now that I think about it. Or can I? Oh, crap. Was I stoned when I originally wrote this? Because now I cannot tell. Uh, let me check the temperature. Okay, that's all right, I guess. Um. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this bounce check real quick. Uh, okay, because uh, I mean it's it's actually trivial, but um. It is actually trivial, but uh, I don't want it to. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is just uh, do, do it the. I'm go, I'm gonna do it the not the not in the clever way because obviously when I try to do things the clever way, uh, things go wrong. So it's actually not uh, ending to three. It should be uh, less than two. So, and just just for those that don't get it, uh, this would be three in binary but uh, actually the maximum we're gonna have is uh, is two right and so if we're ending some i with three we would get um, we would be allowing this value as, a, as an index right and um, you know, it it really is superfluous to superfluous. Is that the the correct term? It's overkill. Let let's go with that. It's overkill to um, do a bounce check here because actually this uh this thing this this uh, key call thing is handled by um I think it's so the function that makes these calls is generated right yeah uh, the this the very same file that generates the key map takes all those uh all those callbacks that you define makes functions out of them gives them names and then loads them into the slots that you've specified right and so basically at runtime all you have to do is just init the keyboard and uh and then call this function, right? To load all of your callbacks. But here's the interesting part. Uh, maybe someone wants to modify the callbacks at runtime, right? So for most use cases, you, would, you wouldn't you would even know this function exists, right? You, you would never use this, uh, this, uh, this function. You would never call it. You, you would never call it yourself, let's say. You would never call it directly. But it's still there, and so I thought, you know, I I don't really want to, I don't really want to uh, do, <laughs> I don't really want to have an overflow, <laughs> like it's just, like yeah. So anyhow, I just re I just remember how to do bounce checking. I'm sorry. Uh, it's kind of my thing, and uh, I always I always mess it up. I don't know why. So it's actually less or equal to two. So anyhow, I was trying to be smart here and end it to three. And what happens when you do that, and I know I keep jumping around, you know, like bear with me, like this is what I am. I have brain problems and shit. So <laughs> anyhow, when you end something to three, uh, 
and let's say you would get uh, this uh, you you're basically masking these bits and nothing else so if you get something like this and you and put three you get these two bits so the problem with uh, ending with three is that actually you want to end to array size minus one but if you end to two you only get this bit so that's that's the that's the problem basically um, so yeah I'm just gonna do it like this uh, which is just uh, which is just a, sh a shorthand a syntactical shorthand like I'm fairly certain fairly certain this will include just um, modifying whichever register this thing is on if it is on a register doesn't matter doesn't matter it's already done anyhow moving on so well now that this old thing is dynamic and uh, you can uh, define your your keyboard layout you can just generate different keyboard layouts and just utilize the same header and the same object file without having to recompile it because that's the important thing you want to use this code you want to just say okay I want keyboard support include keyboard.h right that's generally what you want to do uh, just get me the thing with as uh, with as little uh, hassle as in like uh, and make it as as little as a hassle as possible right so you can just include keyboard.h and you get all of his uh, goodies and and all of and most of the of the tedious stuff is uh, generated for you so in order to sort of uh, get to the keyboard uh, handling endgame here we really do need to take care of uh, oops we really do need to take care of this um, of this nasty business here and okay so let's close this and so yeah uh, we need to work with the file generator and um, Give me one second. I'm gonna take off my uh, how do you say this this thing because it's hot. Okay, so give me a sec. Oh, you can see me in the you can see me in the glass anyway, but uh, you can see me in the mirror anyway. But okay. Oops. Okay. Anyhow, wearing black flag here, so, <clears throat> um, okay, so I forgot to roll before I began rolling, so, hmm, I'm gonna turn up the volume and roll me a cigar, okay, hmm. I'm gonna roll, 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 roll real quick. Okay, so one thing I forgot about real quick before before we get to to the meat of the video, um,
these uh, is tap is hell and, and and all that this gets you the state of a key so if you want to know sorry jeremy <laughs> anyhow if you want to know is a key uh, if you want to know the state of a key you can just use this but right this is only internal so there are um right so we have these these wrappers around them right so getting the state of a key is uh, just you know, say key hell and uh just the name of your key and that's that so as you can see um this this very much simplifies the whole process because first and foremost you define what the names of the keys are okay you define what the names you're going to be working with are okay uh, second when you want to know the state of a key you can just fetch the state of a key and i think there is no third point it's just it's too simple for a third point so yeah yeah just just that that that, that was it okay so uh we need to work on on doing this so i'm gonna do you know, key map and i'm gonna open up a new file let me make sure that i'm not opening one that already exists so and i have to make this a Should I call it keygen? No, no, because uh, keygen, uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's another thing, that's another thing, so, uh, let's call it KBD. Nah, I'm gonna call it keyboard.pm, uh, I'm gonna be boring, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's fine, okay. So, actually, I'm going to copy and paste this. You know how I always say about copying and pasting? This is one of those things I like to do. Okay. Dude. Board. Um. Okay. This is basic tip. You know, it's going to be a little bit weird, right? Because I'm just going to be uh, fixing uh, little things in here. And uh, ba basically just naming. So, let's see. On tap, on hell, on rail. So we, we're always using the same terminology, right? The cells is weird. Alright, so there has to be some kind of a split, oh no, I'm doing it right here, okay, good, okay, so let me just uh, rename here and I'll get to the copying and pasting, okay, so there should be another instance of this, right here, okay, so this is just the process by which uh, the, 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 the use of the find key map is, um, is being read okay it's uh you know i i, I know that uh to non-perl programmers or programmers that don't know perl i should say this looks like a bunch of uh <laughs> of fucking nope right like you, you look at code like this and you say this is a bunch of fucking nope but uh, once you get used to everything having a dollar sign <laughs> Once you get used to that, uh, it's actually fairly, fairly straightforward. Uh, like, I, I pinky promise. So anyhow, learn Pearl, kids. It's good for you. <laughs> anyhow, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're good over here. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is make it so the... Okay, I'm gonna have to make it so the key map is an argument uh, passed to this uh, to this function. 
Like they call them subroutines, but it's a function, dude. <laughs> right? Sometimes it's a subroutine, sometimes it's definition. In my language, it's proc. I love me some of that. But, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a function. That's that's what it is. Anyhow. Uh, I'm gonna say my key map would be and we're gonna pass this as a reference just to be consistent with our rules and shift because if you know me I like popping from the argument uh, stack, I should say. Argument array, whatever. And same thing here. Okay. So everything else, I'm fairly certain we can just leave as it is. We're gonna run some tests anyway, but um, okay. This uh, is an old comment. Don't remember why I took it out, but um, yeah. I'm just gonna take this out. Because I mean, it's it, it must be a, a week's old. Let's comment this out for now and. I forgot about it, and if I forgot about it, then it's probably something I don't even want. Like it had, it's it's funny how things that like that happen sometimes. Let me look at it once more time. Yeah, it's it's not even use it's not even using the the naming convention I'm I'm used to, so it must be really really old. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'll be damned. <sighs> Actually, why am I... Like, it's kind of weird having this function call here, right? <laughs> because, uh... I guess I could make it so the the dictionary the, the dictionary the the array is just read and interpreted. I could make it like that. <sighs> it's a little bit of a hassle. Hmm. Well, we, we we'll see about it. We'll see about it soon enough. Uh, first, I gotta move these things. So yeah, all of this All of this I can safely move into the other one, okay. And <laughs> look at this. Change to install the <laughs> I love I just I did ass left that thing there forever and forgot about it. Okay. Okay. Because uh, automat would be the <clears throat> automat would be the the source uh, the source folder, right? And live would be the just the folder proper. It's, it's like where you would actually install these things too. Okay. So.
Okay, so I'm gonna... Um, I'm gonna leave the... The keyboard layout hard-coded for now, okay? Because... Um, this is a file you would generally not want to modify. Unless you're gonna be changing names. Uh, it's not something you would modify, right? And it's not even... It, I mean, it's names that... Uh, only have meaning for internal uh, for in for the internals themselves um, like only at this point right when you have to to pick a name from here only and only then do these names matter and um, I mean if you wanted to you could change them um, but you know, it's it's such a it's such a weird thing to do that uh, you know I I I I feel it's better to just leave it there hard coded because you would need to have the source to this if you were going to do any generation. So yeah, yeah, we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there for now. And in any case, if we want to change it, we can always change it. Okay. All right, and oh yeah, I need to make this a package. Actually, you know what? I, I'm I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna change the name of this. It's gonna be Gen Keys. Gen Keys. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so package Gen Keys. Is that nice? Hmm? Oh, let's let's call it Ganks. Genki. <laughs> Ganks. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Nice. So, um I need to return one actually because this is a package. I always put this bit in anyway so I can just turn anything into a package. Might be bad practice, but um Okay. So, right, I don't think there's uh, anything else for me to review here. I'm just reading the code to make sure that I'm not breaking things. I might break a thing or two here and there, but uh, uh, I'd rather minimize that, right? Okay. So another one of those things. Um, the TI keys, which are the, the textual input keys, will always have... A, this uh, this thing to them, right? So um. oops. I need to get a hold of okay. So it's right, so key TI one, right? So yeah, it's just a thing. Uh, you could remove it. You could remove it, uh, if you if you're so inclined. You know, just it's it's right here. It's on RDTI, okay. And now here is where I'm gonna I'm gonna make a change, because uh, we do want we do want to make it so you can uh, select your own TI file, okay. And if you have no TI file, then you don't even uh, need to to do this, okay. So because all this is doing is. Uh, how do you say? Uh, it's just um, creating a sort of like extending the the key map here, right? It's only uh, creating additional entries uh, which all follow the, the same formula, right? So the idea is uh, all uh, TI keys, all text input keys would uh, follow sort of uh, the same guidelines for for how they would uh, they would function okay oops so it would be a little bit weird um, if you wanted textual input and some additional functionality on top we can add support for that later okay 
Um, I mean... I mean, yeah, okay, let, let's put a to-do on that, okay? Let, let's put a to-do on that. Uh, handle uh, non-TNT, right? Non-TNT. <laughs> uh, Non-TNT case. Meaning... Both uh, custom callback... Uh, no. Not both. Say, uh, handle, um, custom code on, uh, TI, on TI funks. Okay. So what this would mean is, um, allowing the, the user to, to define additional behavior for a text input key, right? So perhaps, uh, the W key does something in one context and something else in another, right? And in another context, it's just it just prints W, right? So perhaps you want some of that. Uh, actually, you probably do want some of that in a lot of use cases. So we, we we'll add support for that later on. Okay? Don't don't worry about it. Anyhow, we want to pass in the name of the of our TI file. So and. Obviously, if you just want to use the default one, you can just pass that, okay? So, what I'm gonna do is uh, TI file. That would be shift, right? So, you, you just pass the the path to the thing. And, uh, actually, it's uh, text input funks. And, uh, let's say, in uh, path to... Um, how should I call it? Um, because it's a weird kind of layout. Pat to uh, charm up. To key charm up table. Okay, that's that. I can understand that. <laughs> Which is not saying a lot, but okay. So let me put the separate there. Because this is just set up, and this is where the meat actually is. Okay. All right, so let's keep on copying and pasting. Okay, but you can see how much nicer it is to just have your table. You can just modify that, and that's all you need to focus on, right? And everything else is just show to the back. Okay, I'm gonna change this to live, and I'm gonna use alt, and I'm gonna use uh, ganks. I like it. I like I like it when I like it when, <laughs> when I can just pronounce the thing right like gangs ot right like, like it's a weird fucking name I love it when that happens okay um okay all right so there's just one thing. Alright, this this one I'm gonna leave as it is hard coded. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. Um the key file you're already passing. Okay, alright. So the the thing I was gonna to ex I was going to explain uh, relating to this bit in particular uh because of the way that automat works, you always need to define your project route. And project root, in this case, being all path, but it's just um, just this folder, right, which has my projects. The idea is uh, you have one folder, and within it, all your uh, interdependent projects and things, right? So your submodules, if you will. Um, and so the idea with Automat is that it's, uh, well, yeah, the, the underlying idea with the whole project is it's not just my own implementation of Make. I mean, it is, but it's also the way um, the way I, I, I managed to build like a whole bunch of projects in just one go, right? So that's the idea. You have one file to manage all of your Make files, so to speak. 
and uh, I mean, Oat was built for that specifically, specifically, specifically for that. And so whenever you, you're working with Oat, you do need to define your project route. That's just a thing I wanted to point out. Okay. Anyhow. Let me replace uh, some of the things here. So, ganks, IBPI, right? You know what? Actually, this whole process should be, this whole process should be on a, on a call here, right? We should have a process key map. There we go. Oops. This is not C. So when I'm in C, when I'm in C, and every time I declare a, a variable, I can't help but put the dollar in there. And whenever I'm in Perl and I'm defining a sub, I can't help but uh, put the parentheses in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. So. It will, it will be ganks, it will be just this, and um, my uh, key map would be, um, I'd say, would be the ref argument index zero and shift because I always do that. And We're pushing to it, and we want to save it. We actually, we actually want to save this. Let's save it as a the reference. So click on that here, and since I'm at it, the non TI. So the the non TI thing is um, all of your all of your keys which are not uh, textual input. Uh, have a the 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 repeat the the auto repeat on that uh, it's handled a little bit differently slightly differently just to make it so you can actually type right so if you have a, a repeat uh, rate that's too high you press a once and you you end up with this right so you press the key once and it's like you press it five times so because of that. Uh, what I do is all of the keys that are not with textual input come first, are defined first, and then all of the text input keys are defined after that. And so when you want to do that, uh, that differentiation in repeat rate, it's just saying, okay, so is a uh, key less than uh, non TI, right? And so it, it, if this is true, then you want to handle the repeat rate uh, normally, else you want to do the, the exceptions for textual input and so on and so forth. So this should be zero. It should start out at zero. I guess. Yeah, whatever. Okay. So what I'm going to do is actually now I don't have to... Now I do not have to pass a uh, key map to any functions. No, I'm just going to store it. Okay, so it should be cache key map. It's equal to a reference to key map. That's nice. And then uh, cache non ti. Oops, that's non ti. Okay. Okay, cool. So, um,. Then the thing you have to pass to this is uh, your TI file. Okay, so you can just uh, all the TI and pass in TI file. Okay. Okay, that that that's a wrap. Okay, so um um reads uh, use the find uh, use the find key map. Okay, and the in is going to be, well, key map the file, uh, file to check input depths, let's say. Okay, okay. 
That works. I guess. The other thing I want to do is um, doing the handling of this thing, okay? So, what I'm gonna do... If... If... Mm. No, you know what? No. <laughs> okay, listen, listen. Okay, so I can... Because this one, punk, always has to run. Then I can... Right, this always has to run. And I don't want to have to force the user to always specify this. Because it's a little bit uncomfortable. Right? So, you should just pass it the name of the key. And then this call should be made by the, by the process. Right? By the process key map. But the thing is, uh, the read key file bit, um, I mean, what I could do is, if you have three strings defined in this uh, array reference, in this anonymous array reference, then I would, in I would say, okay, so the entire thing is defined. Else, if you have a single... A single string? Hmm. And now that I think about it... Well, actually... You have a single string and we need to check that it exists, right? Yeah. Yeah, if, if you have a single string and it's a path to a valid file, then we can just read it. Right, so you so you never need to specify shit. That's nice. Yeah, let's let, let's go with that. I like it. I like it. Let's automate to the max. Oh my god, that sounded so lame. <laughs> automate to the maximum. Ay ay ay. Okay. Okay, so let's get rid of this. And you know, it's 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 always nice, um, I'm not much of a front-end kind of guy, but uh, it's always nice uh, simplifying the interfacing, right? Um, like I said, I'm not much of a front-end guy, but uh, I, I sort of enjoy the whole process of, um, of thinking, okay, I want this to be simpler for the, for the user, as simple as I can make it, right? So maybe not all that much. Uh, I have a an interesting mind, so to speak. <laughs> uh, but it's cool, right? Like uh, making these uh, simplified interfaces, making a simplified interface to your code, so that uh, basically you spur uh, those you you look at those who will come after you and you simplify the headaches you had to go through right so you you spare them the headaches you had to go through that's that's uh quite honestly that's what motivates me a lot of the time anyhow Getting a drink here, give me a sec. Hopefully, hopefully, I did not set the music volume too high, and half of what I've been talking about has not been entirely drowned out by the music. And hopefully, the music uh, is somewhat audible, okay? Because I really, 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 really like this music. Um, for those that don't know, this is uh, Jeremy Soul's Njol. I think that's how you pronounce that. It means night, if I'm not mistaken. It's a hell of a beautiful piece. And Jeremy Soul, you probably heard his music, right? If you played uh, Skyrim uh, Oblivion, 
Morrowind, uh, if we play uh, Neverwinter Nights or Dungeon Siege, uh, I think Guild Wars 2 as well. Uh, just a, a whole bunch, a whole bunch of great games. Jeremy Soule had a hand in the making of the music. And uh, he's just, he's just a, a, an outstanding composer. Uh, I... I I'm honest. I'm honestly always, always impressed by by how great this guy is. I mean, the Morrowind main team, you know, the Morrowind main team. That shit brings tears to my eyes sometimes. I'm honest. It's uh, it's beautiful, beautiful music. Anyhow, uh, enough uh, about my sentimental nature. <laughs> What I want to do is handle the, the processing, okay? So let's do that. And it's actually not that difficult. Okay. So what I have to do... Before I start pushing things here, okay? I want to do a little loop, okay? So let's uh, make a little space here. You know, just to signify, uh, people ask me, why do I do this? To signify that something happens within this block, right? Um, it, it, it's sort of like opening a scope, <laughs> in a sense, all right? Like, like just sim you're signifying what happens here is self-contained. You can, you can take this uh, by itself, right? So, it, at least for me, it does wonders in simplifying... Uh, understanding of the code and I would hope it uh, helps uh, whomever <laughs> comes after me okay it's always very important <laughs> code readability kids <laughs> like there's no good way to do it no real talk there's no good way to do it there's no good way uh, no, no no list of bad practices that everyone's gonna like right because everyone has their own different idea of uh, of what good coding of what clean coding looks like right uh, I've been mocked I've been mocked a lot of times for uh, for, for for doing this uh, it doesn't matter to me because this works for me okay if it doesn't work for someone else well they can go fuck themselves but <laughs> you know this is what does it for me if I'm working with a large ass code base even being my own project made from scratch uh, I forget things, okay? I do forget things, and it's always nice having a reminder. So anyhow, what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna walk through key map, and so for my uh, key, yeah, for my key, okay, uh, for my key, for my key, for my key uh, in key map, okay. And, oh, oh shit, I just realized, I can't do it like that. Hmm. Well, it's not a, it's not a problem really. <laughs> it's not a problem really, I just... Gotta do it slightly differently. Uh, I less than uh, key map, uh, length of key map, I should say, uh, or size of key map. You you get what I'm saying. So anyhow, I gotta do it like this now, and so um, my uh, key name would be, uh, and actually this is plus two, and um. This would be key map at I, and the next uh, field would be an array reference to all of our different data. The way I'm gonna handle that is just I'm gonna say my car, right? Get it? My car. <laughs> okay, so I'm dumb. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, actually, 
this is the region like that. Yeah. See, I, I've 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 been drilled. I've been drilled that syntax into my brain by the, uh, you know, because the thing with Perl, um, real talk. Okay, I love saying that real talk, right? Like, like it makes people think you are actually serious now. Um, <laughs> but but seriously. Uh, I discovered Perl. I began learning Perl um, about a month ago, say, and uh, I immediately loved it. I, I I can't really put my finger on what it is, but I love this fucking language. I just I love it. I don't care if no one uses it. I don't care if it's an unpopular language. Uh, I really like it. It allows me to do a lot of things that are very interesting. Like this entire uh, code generation stuff. Uh, it's uh, It makes it very easy to do these kinds of things. Like, I I'm being serious here, okay? Uh, parsing uh, shit, uh, any kind of string processing, it's very convenient in Perl. Uh, it has lots of, of nice things. But there, uh, and so, from the bottom of my heart, I love this language. I really do love this language. It makes me happy. It makes me happy to have such a powerful tool uh, to, to realize uh, all of this that, that I've been able to do. I would not have been able to develop even half of this project if not for, the, for all the tools that Perl provides. But here's the thing. Uh, there is one thing I don't like about Perl. The error messages are just shit. My god, the error messages are terrible. But when you have the good pragmas, when you have these two pragmas, it will nag you to death whenever you try to reference uh, some some array element, you try to pick it like this. Whenever you try to do that, it will nag you and it will say it's better written like this. <laughs> and so if those are the only error messages I receive that make any sense, then you bet I'm gonna listen to them, right? So, okay, enough of that tangent. Uh, okay, so... I have the array, I have the array, and so what I want to look at is first, the first element of that array, uh, that would be our key code, okay? And so I want to make it. Uh, I want to make it so it's. Uh, it uses the key i func, which is a key index, basically. So, like I like I touched on yesterday, uh, the key code of the key is basically its index into the translation table. So that's it's more or less how we handle a lot of things. So this key i func does a little bit. There's a little bit of uh, translation there. It's it's actually fetching from a table, I, if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, it's just a shorthand. So, okay. Uh, we want to uh, put in here the uh, first element of the array, and that's that, basically. So it just translates the name. And then what we want to do is uh, we want to know the length of the array, okay? So we want to know the... Um, could it be element count? Yes. The element count of the array... Um, how can I do this? Uh, actually, like this. Because I need to take one from it anyway, right? So I think it's actually like... Oops. Actually like this. Yeah. I think it's actually like that. And it gives you the like the count, the, the 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 number of indexes, right? So what I need to know is what I need to do actually. Um, if uh, this index count is one, no, actually, if it's greater than one, now. No, no, no. We're going to do it like this, okay? So, if it's 1, if it's 1, then we assume it's a path 
to a... How do you say? It's a path to a key file, right? So if it's just one, it's a path to a key file. Else, it's just this, okay? Now, wait, wait a second. I can do, I can do better. I can do much better. No, 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 no. Let's do it like this. Um, if this happens, and let me just look at um, all the key files. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So do I have? Uh, uh, I want to turn it into a. Um, like um, I don't know if I want to use the, the the file finding functions here. Ah, uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm just just to get by. Just to get by, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it the the easy way. Okay. So if oops, <laughs> not like that. So if the if the path. Um, points to an existing file so if we have one element and it's a path to some existing file then uh, we do the we do the RD key file okay so what we want to do is we want to we want to pop Right, so my file will be pop from array, okay, and that would give us the element at the end, right? So shift gives you the the first element, the the element at the at the at the first index, and pop gets you the element at the last index. So we pop. We have the file, and now what I want to do is push the array that we get from uh, the key file, from this key file. Okay. Okay, so that was easy. That was fairly easy. Alright. Else, what we want to do then is um, make sure that uh, we have uh, all three fields, right? So... We need three strings, and they can be just empty strings, and in that case, uh, we will not have an actual callback, just a nope, which is just a funny way to say no up, right? So basically, do nothing. That's just computer spark for do nothing. Um, okay, so yeah, that's, that's that. Uh, I want to make sure that we have uh, those three elements and they are not undefined, okay? So... I think I'm gonna do it. Um... I think I'm gonna do just uh, a half assed loop, okay? So, J1, J less than uh, 4, and J plus plus, J plus plus, okay? Uh, like, I think. I think this is valid. I think this is valid though. So let's let's try it. Doesn't work, it doesn't work. So uh, J equals So we're just checking that this thing uh, is uh, it's not else uh, be yourself, right? So basically what this is, if you are not just if you are not defined, 
then be an empty string, else be yourself. Okay. That's that. Okay. And actually, this is short enough that I can just put it in a single line. No, that's confusing. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if I can uh, extend an array this way. I'm not entirely sure, okay? We'll try. We'll try. And we'll see what happens. Alright? So anyhow. That should be about enough. I think so let's add some comments here um, do key translation do key name translation oh oh no what am I thinking right 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 I don't actually <laughs> Right, so this is what happens. I don't need the key name. I don't need the key name. I just need the data. Right. I'm just uh, processing the data, not the name itself. Okay. Um. Read callbacks from file. Okay. Okay, all right. Let me just say, uh, cache it. So that's a, a, a faster way of saying it. Okay. All right. So now we can just call this. But you know, you still have to specify ganks, but uh, it's faster. I would say. I mean. I would rather have one function call than one func than like two or three per every element, right? So this is much, much uh, more digestible, I think. I mean, just look, uh, most of these things, I don't even have to break them up into different lines, so yeah. That's nice. Okay. So actually, yeah, the scan code name I should write here, because that's basically what it is. And I shouldn't say scan code, it's actually a key code, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is a key code. Okay. Okay, okay. So... I want to move this then. Okay. All right. So this is one thing and Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> I missed the top. Okay. Here we go. Okay, alright. So. We don't actually need to pass the key map because I can just get it from the cache. From the cache. Okay. And. check yep I need it right here so non p non pi it's just cash non pi and actually I should just I 
can just do that. It's actually faster. And yeah. And right here, same story. Okay. So I do need to do this part. Uh, save um, non text input key count. Uh, read uh, text input config and cache. Nah. Yeah, the the cache the thing is just implicit. Uh, like 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 you you can understand that I'm saving things to cache, right? Just from just from the names that I've chosen for this. Okay. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure you can do it. So... Okay. So... There might be some things... That don't work right out of the box, but... Um, but probably I'm, I'm good here, okay. have to do that's in gangs okay and this one is uh, the file that generates the, the key calls okay so the the callback table basically all right and once again we do not need to Pass anything, we can just take it from the cache. Okay. So, schema. You know, uh, everyone's got a problem with keeping some global state, but um, you can see how it makes my life easier to just to do it like this? <laughs> it, it does. You know, you need to fetch this data, just fetch it. Like, yeah, I get it. Um, like, it's frowned upon and uh, and all of that, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's just rules that you set for yourself while you're coding. Uh, because you want to follow a certain standard. Well, uh, my standard is uh, not to fool myself about the way that the computer works. Alright? You declare a class in C++ or Java or whatever and you make all of the the members all of the member variables you make them all private um, did you know that they're all visible to the machine yeah they're all visible like at the level of assembly you can just do whatever the fuck you want you can catch that address and just monkey around with it you can write anything to an address that's within your within the addressable space of your program you can just write shit to that unless it's the code section I don't remember that part and I have not played around much with that with the self-modifying code because that's that's another mindfuck but um, yeah so I mean everything is a fucking global okay Everything is a fucking global. Everything is fucking global state. Any value within your program can be considered, you know, any <laughs> any value that concerns more than one function is basically global state. It's an address, people. You can just write shit to that address. Um, limiting uh, what you can do is just like uh, it's just a symbolic thing. It's a com like, it's just an artificial restriction, okay? It's an artificial restriction guided by some sense of uh, of how it's better to code. And generally, yes, if you have a whole bunch of global variables and it's all disorganized, um, kind of like with the interpreter I wrote, that was a bad call on my end, I would admit that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to show you, okay? So... Uh, uh, you know, ju just to show you that I understand when uh, a lot of globals is a bad idea. Just to show you that, okay? 
and I got it right here, and if I'm not mistaken, it's boxes.h, yeah, okay. So, this is an interpreter for a language I wrote. Yeah, a language I wrote, I designed. I have designed, I still haven't finished it, but uh, whatever. Uh, the thing is, there's a lot of uh, global state shit going on, okay? So, you have uh, this uh, interpreter here, and the mistake I made is... Uh, I could have put all of the global state within the interpreter, right? I could have done that, and then, you know, you still have lots of, uh, of globals, but they are contained within a, a their own namespace, right? So it's a little bit more more clean. And so when you're grabbing something from Mammy, right? <laughs> because it's the mammoth interpreter, and so I call it Mammy because that that's cute. So anyhow, uh, I could have put all of the global state inside of this, and uh, I forgot. Uh, I, I honest to God didn't realize until it was too late. And then I had all of these, all of these globals, like, all around the code base, and then changing it would, would be a pain in the ass. And you see, so there you, here, here you have a clear example of when too much global state is a bad idea. But let me further break this down. You know what the actual problem is? The global state is shared. That was my mistake. That was my bigger mistake. Not that there's a lot of global state, because everything is fucking global state. But, um, right? Like, and anything that is not like, uh, like stack allocated, it's fucking global state. So, you know, it, you know, you can fool yourself thinking you are not using globals, but you are. But anyhow, the, the what what I'm getting at here is, uh. I made this visible, like directly visible to every other file that is you working with the interpreter. And so that's the actual problem that now this is rigid. I cannot change it. I cannot change it because then I have to walk through a whole lot of files changing every occurrence. And so, right. So see, uh, I have some integrity, right? So I, I, will, I will critique people for, for talking shit about globals. But I can recognize when globals go wrong because I have done it myself, okay? So don't you think I don't know what I'm talking about? I know the perils. I know the perils. But see, here the global state is encapsulated. Here the global state is encapsulated. Only the file knows about its global state, right? Only the file is working with the global state. So it's not actually global, it's a file scope. You know, you can fool yourself into thinking it that way, but <laughs> it's still visible anyhow. It's still, it's still a global, but anyhow, you know, uh, one time I was talking to, you know, some kid, um, some kid uh, that really, really, really believes in, in object-oriented, like, there's just no saving him now. Right, like the guy actually believes it's the it's the way to go to solve every problem. And I was talking to him about how um, once I had too many getters, and he said, "No, you did it wrong." And I said, "How? How so? I need to fetch global state." And he did not know what global state was. He did not know what I was talking about. <laughs> like kids these fucking days, am I right? Anyhow. I mean, seriously, do, do you not understand what global state means? And you call yourself a programmer, you call yourself a software engineer, you do not know what global state is. Holy shit, man. You know, I may not have a, like, a title and social status, but at least I know my shit. Anyhow. I should stop being so mean. I do not know who's even gonna watch this, if anyone. Anyhow, um, am I recording? I, I just checked, yes. <laughs> recording Paranoia, episode 129. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I think we're done. I think we're done. So now.
what I need to do is modify the... I need to modify the config here. Okay, so that would be uh, or automate and uh, or install. Okay, and I need to go into uh, C config. Okay, so I actually say right, but it's weird pronouncing it in English, right? Like C. It's uh, so it's say because it's uh, champs editor right so 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 i said you know i want i want a name like sort of like bim right like it's uh, like bim or ed right it's it's or joe right i w i want something like that right like it's short and this is what i came up with so yeah it's dumb but this is what i got and yeah um Oh. I need to Okay, okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay, so I need to move gangs.pm and yes, I need to, I still need to rename the file, but I uh, I'm going to do it. Don't don't worry. Okay. So what this does basically is uh it takes the the Perl module or any file that you put in here and it copies it into the the lit folder so then other files can can look at it uh, this time around it's going to be a little bit weird okay because so generally you would include this like so we have a problem here though okay we have a problem here, and that problem is. Let me get rid of this comment here. Um, we cannot ensure that. Oops, I'm sorry. We cannot ensure that Gangs is within the lib folder because uh, the copy stage of, uh, of libraries and, and old files happens after the build. And we need the files generated by gangs in order to build. So you see, it's sort of a chicken and egg situation here. And that's sort of been the pattern for the last few weeks of my life. Yeah, the last few months, I should say. So what I'm going to say is, uh, for this one instance, I always want to work with the edit version of gangs. So that I know that uh, when I build the project, I always have this one. But when uh, on on when when you're using this library, you would actually include it like this, okay? Or you would just put it in your include path, but uh, in your how do you say in your ink? I think it is uh, or the I think it's Perl five live. I don't remember. Uh, I don't. I don't really remember how you're supposed to add to the Perl search path because I always just do it manually. <laughs> I always just do it manually because I figure, you know, like I have everything in one folder. I have everything in the same folder. Why not? Anyhow, it might come back to bite me in the ass later on, but. Um... I mean, I made it an environment variable. That means I'm somewhat responsible. <laughs> so anyhow. Uh, yeah. That should maybe work. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. So let's just go in here. And I'm actually going to deviate this. So that just, it's... Uh, it's a standard error redirection so that I can just quickly read here. Yeah. Right. I didn't rename it. <laughs> I said, I said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Guess what? I did not. Anyhow, I did not. <laughs> okay. So what did I call it? So it's a keyboard PM gangs. PM. I don't know why I called it gangs. Uh, Generate keys. All oh, right, right. That's why, gangs. I like it. <laughs> gangs. It's it's a funny name to me. Anyhow, 
I'm dumb like that. So okay. Start generating. Okay, something happened. Oh crap. Ooh, I've been recording for a while now. Okay. So, okay, let's just top it off with the arena soundtrack. Why not? You guys have a play uh, Elder Scrolls Arena? Anyone? Any Elder Scrolls Arena fans? <laughs> I I gotta be honest, it's, it's one of my favorite games. I, I really like it. Uh, someday, maybe, when I have an actual internet connection, I'll do some streaming of me playing it. It's It's a nice game. I like it. Uh, oh, let's go with this one because it was. Uh, this one is like cleaner, and this one is like more chipmunk. No, more chiptune. So it's more interesting. Okay. Okay. So, uh, apparently I fucked up. Oops. No. Uh, what am I thinking? Games. The M and uh, 140. Ah, shit, right. <laughs> I forgot, I it completely slipped my mind, I'm sorry. We actually have to pass that, so uh, let's team up. In our case, this would be from root, that would be uh, se, uh, keys, ti. Okay. Try it again. Right. Let's check the error messages. Woof. Oh, that's a whole lot. So apparently, Apparently, uh, where is this uh, in the process uh, part? Yeah. So, apparently, I fucked up. Hmm. Right, you know why? Because I'm the referencing it. So it's always kind of weird how this thing works. Um, what I'm gonna have to do... Oh, it's too fucking... So, um, because one thing you can do is just, you can just um, get the, the reference as is, right? And then when you want to put it into array context, you can just do that. Okay, let's 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 actually let's do it like that because else it's gonna be a nightmare. I mean, yeah, I, or I could just um, yeah, like this kind of thing. It's just too confusing to do like this. This kind of thing is just really confusing. To I would suppose can I can I do that I, I wonder I wonder can I do that Let's find out. So, 
doesn't work, it doesn't work, like I always say. That and here, I need to do this. What happened? I hate it when there's some... Um, when there's some weird key combination I'm not aware of that takes me like to somewhere else in the file. And it's a key combination I, I'm not aware of, I didn't set myself and uh, it does weird shit without my consent. <laughs> I hate that. Okay. I mean, I, I could just dereference it and then at the end of the... of the iteration just... Um, replace the, the reference here with another with a reference to the modifier array, but that's, that seems like a, a, that seems like a lot messy, like really messy. Okay. What? Hmm. What's going on? What's going on here? Holy shit, what? What? Okay. Can I use Lang? No. Uh, okay, let's do, let's do the more confusing thing, that um, the messier thing, that I actually know how to make it work. <laughs> else I'm gonna be here all day and I don't want to. I'm just gonna override this shit, okay, that's fine. Oh, so it did work, but something else is wrong. Well, fuck! Ah, uh, well, whatever. Yeah, okay. Alright, so if I'm... Wait, but I learned something. 
Okay, so... Uh, alright, 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 I got it. So what I was doing was, was fine. Which leads me to believe... That the error is somewhere else, okay. Oh, I thought this was gonna be faster. To be entirely honest, Twitcher. Like, I didn't think I was gonna have to uh, sit down and, and tinker too much. <sighs> okay. But obviously. Let's see what went wrong, okay? So, alright, so the indices appear to be okay. Okay, so this is the problem. The This was not done correctly. Let's see about the key calls. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. This is, this is bullshit. This is bullshit, what? It's never getting in here. Let's do this instead and see what happens. Wait, um, I can run it myself and see what happens. There we go. I just look at the right. <laughs> I just look at the um, how do you say? At the line number it gives me, and I'm going like, okay, so what's wrong with that? All right, so that's nice. Let's see. All right, so now we generate the generate it correctly. Okay, so let's see the key the key calls. Okay, so, okay, alright. So peace has been restored to my kingdom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> alright, alright. So... Just one thing, um... Okay. Alright, so... This thing is just done all automatically, okay. So yeah, I mean, this is sort of the thing, right? Uh, it has to generate uh, this, uh, this data structure from a file. Uh, data structure, I, I'm, I'm sounding like a human resource guy. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, honestly, uh, it has to generate this dictionary. Yeah, it's it's a it's a dictionary and an and an array, if I'm not mistaken. It has to generate this stuff from a file. But the thing is, this thing always needs to be there, right? So what I should do actually is uh, just type the thing out, right? But I figured 
it's better to just define it in a file than just pass the file and all of that shit. So anyhow. Um, like, you, you, you could actually replace all of this with just the, the, the array, right? You, you could do that. But I chose not to. Anyhow. I mean, it, it would be too repetitive, right? Because it's listing a bunch of indices, uh, sequential indices at that. Uh, and making the correspondence between that and some other stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's better to leave the, that kind of work to the script. That's, that's probably better. Okay, so I think that uh, that's it. Okay, so alright. Alright, we still have errors, but... Yeah, this is, this is actually, this is actually a pretty good point. This is actually a pretty good point. Uh, not, uh, not this part. This part is actually just something I wrote for like demonstration and I left it in there like a fool right so it's like a comment I should have deleted and I didn't so two things um, .c and keyboard.h okay so what I have to do for the key and t thing is actually uh, this needs to be a const right so it's so your key lay uh, it's not something you're going to modify at runtime Hopefully, uh, it's not designed that way. Um, like, you have to know the keys you're going to use ahead of time. That's, that's just the bottom line. Uh, if you want to have a, a way to configure those key bindings, uh, well, first and foremost, make it open source, put it in a config file, and let the user modify it and recompile it themselves. That's the true way to do this kind of shit. Uh, so no, this is a const. And well, I forgot. I forgot about that for a second. So yeah, that's why. Okay. Now for the other error. This one is just <laughs> like a rogue thing that I left there. Okay. So what else? Seems nothing else. Okay. Let's try it again, and we still have a mistake, okay, so what? <coughs> uh, It's right, it's right. Uh, I should change that. It's a. Uh, but if I change it into a pointer pointer, it's still going to complain, likely. So this is. You know, I, I, I like trash talking languages I really don't like, but even with the languages I like, I still like trash talking them a little bit. Um, so, I mean, this this really, really doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, I mean, to me, to me, I I'm sorry, to me, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, I mean, is this saying that it's... <coughs> Excuse me here, uh, is this thing saying it's... Is it saying it's 
an array of pointers because it is not. Or is it making a difference between array and point? Oh. You know, this is the problem with const. Uh, it, it, it drops you into this uh, sort of uh, philosophical questions, right? <laughs> it drops you into this kind of philosophical question. Uh, and I mean... Well, shit. You know, it's always... It's always a pain in the ass dealing with this. It's always a pain in the ass. Right, so it's... So it must be making a difference between pointer to, a, to an array and just a pointer, right? It's probably making a like that kind of distinction. I know how to fix it. I know how to fix it, okay. So look. So what we have to do is save Kile as a string, okay? If we save it as a string, you know it's the same goddamn thing. Right? It's the same goddamn thing. I don't give a shit. But, uh, it's still gonna complain. So... Uh, like, like, the, the like, like, yeah, a pointer and an array are not the same thing, okay? But, hear me out. Um, functionally, functionally, they are basically the same thing. It's a sequence of characters, right? Without any space between them. It's a sequential, uh array of characters that's what a string is so i declared it as an array and so now it will refuse to simply decay to a pointer hmm. unless i pass it the oh unless i pass it the address of the first element Will that sh make it shut the fuck up? If uh, because I mean, honestly, I, I mean this is this is what I meant by uh, by by passing it as a, as a reference as a reference. I mean this is what I me what I meant. I thought the compiler was smart enough to cat to catch that little hint, but um, well, if I need to be explicit about it. And so be it. Else, uh, I need to write it as a string, which is not... It's not difficult, it's just a pain in the ass having to go back and fix dumb things like this. So anyhow. Okay. Okay, and that's that, basically. Okay. Two. Did I not make it? Const? You shitting me? I did! Const cha pointer. Const cha pointer, I'm sending a const cha pointer, assigning to const cha pointer. Why in the name of fuck is it discarding? I mean, they're the same type. Const char pointer kile and the way I declared here. Const char pointer kile. The... GCC, are you shitting me? Okay. 
Okay, ex explain to me. It must be because I'm assigning. That's why, isn't it? Is it because of that? Uh, I, I don't know. Well, but um, actually, it shouldn't let me do anything with it. Well, you know what? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Okay, let's just test this. What am I? Oh. Okay. Okay, so I messed up somewhere. Let me let me check something real quick. Um Ooh, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to Gangs. And um Right, <laughs> I need to... Oh no! Oh yes! <laughs> okay, so I need to change the order there, okay. Alright. Uh, and let's uh, reveal, okay. So let's do it with... Uh, just the kicks. What? Come on! What's going on there? Uh, uh, what? What the shit? I need to add the dependency, this is what happened. Okay, no problem. Okay. So, um... This is how you add dependencies. <laughs> Since I'm at it, right? So when you have a generator... Basically you say, uh, this file... Needs to run a given file in order to to exist, right? So, if this file doesn't exist, or this file exists and it's uh, older than the executable we're supposed to run, then run that executable and generate the file, or regenerate it, as it may be. Um, but you may also have additional sources, and so you can uh, declare that like this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to say the PM because uh, we are depending on on the library on changes to the library mean a changes into the generation and so we need to modify that that's that's all it is okay so let's run the config okay and now let's run and are you shitting me? No, no, no. No, no, no. What the fuck? What's this? Excuse me, I need to... Um, I need to debug this shit. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh, fuck. Right. This is why. It's only using W prime. Mm. 
found to be problematic. Okay, so I, I got this, don't worry. Alright, alt.pm. So what we have to do basically is we have to go up here into the path that prints this and yeah, uh, what I should do actually is uh, turn this into functions and um, and make the paths relative and all of that but because this is just a proof of concept, you know, it doesn't fucking matter. And I, I mean, I'm the only user of this stuff. But when I have users, then I will actually care to, uh, to, to make it convenient for other people. Right now, it only needs to be convenient for me, right? So, um, I need to look at the generators part. Okay, okay. Um. Okay, so what I'm gonna do... If, uh, source... Actually... Ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna just uh, try and match a uh, wildcard, right? So, if there is a wildcard... On the name, then uh, it, we need to do pattern matching, right? Which returns a list of files. So, do all of this. Else, it's uh, just a single file. So, we can simplify this a bunch by doing this uh, F5. Wait a second, I'm just... Okay, okay, so it turns the source out, right? Okay, good. So... Just gonna replace it, and... It's uh, in source... Ah... Same thing, right? So, whatever. Okay, if it's not, and if it is, then we do the take step. Okay. And it's basically the same block. So we, we just compare the dates and files to, uh, to see if we need to regenerate or not. That's all there is happening on. That's all that's going on. Okay. So I could probably simplify this. Uh, I'm just doing it like this to, like, Get get it done like now. So, automat or install. Well, shit. Most of yeah. Missing semicolon, <laughs> which results in all of these error messages. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Okay. Okay, so I could not find the file, which is sad. How does F fine actually work? It looks into the includes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm even doing it. What, what the shit? Thank you. 
quick. Huh. Ah, okay, okay, so I fucked up. Alright. Alright, there's one thing I have to do. Excuse me. I need to add the... Like, I, I don't get how I was able to get this far without doing this, okay? Um, I think it's make what? So, um, I've been using this build system for a while now, <laughs> for like a, a very long while now, and um, <laughs> I don't know why I didn't realize I made this mistake. Uh, the current folder is not part of the include. <laughs> Which right, because uh, GCC does that for me, but my own library does not. So I actually need to append that. Uh, that's, that's a little bit stupid, but anyhow. Uh, let me check here. Um, and what would name be? Yeah, would be the name of the module itself. That's FS what, and that's the folder name. Okay. Means I should be able. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So actually, let me remove that uh, thing from Ganks. I forgot that was even there. Alright, so now, now it should be good to go, okay, and alright, okay, good, so now, now the implementation works, and you can just, um, write your own programs, uh, with keyboard access using gangs, it's nice, no? So yeah, that's um, that's basically it. That's basically it. That's my end game, <laughs> so to speak, right? So um, I suppose I should uh, make a commit out of this, right? So let's see what's all status. All right. So um, hit add and thanks. That's a nice commit message. Anyhow. Uh, and I should... Um, this is a little bit stupid, but... Um, I should um, commit the... The quote-unquote buff fix to Ultimate, so yeah. Um, uh, gen step... Okay. Yeah. Just because um, the real reason I use Git is because I realized it's the best way to back up my code in case I RM things you wouldn't believe. It has happened to me in the past that I have like uh, done a, a remove on like an entire folder um, by accident. I was trying to MB. I was trying to move files around and I deleted them like an idiot. Like, it happened once, right? To be fair. It happened to me once. I, I made the mistake once and then never again. But still, uh, it happened to me that one time. And since then, every time I code something that uh, sort of uh, furthers my, my goals, I say, I need to, to commit this. So, yeah, okay. 
Alright, so 2 hour and 15 minutes, that's fun. Okay. So, uh, just to just to top this off, okay? Let's um, let's review what we have achieved today. All right? We've made it so um, we can simply uh, define uh, this uh, this sort of uh, dictionary-like uh, kind of structure, where you just give a, a key names and some callbacks. And then uh, from that, with very, very few lines of code, generate the um, these output files with, with your key calls and key map, which you can then use in your code. And the way you, you just use that is you just include like this, you just include the generated key map, right? And you include the keyboard from Seth, right? And then all you have to do is key and T. Key and T and uh, uh, key funk load, right? Or fill the callbacks list by hand. I would not recommend that. Okay. So, save, modify, buffer, I change nothing. Um, no, just the one thing I... It kind of slipped my mind, okay? Um, this uh, this call here is just... Uh, you pass it a, a, a file generator function and, and an array of arguments. And the other two are just what is the name of your header without extension, on which folder relative to the root do you want it. This is why we have to set the root right here, right? Oops. This is why you have to set that root. And then just, you know, your name. Because um, the generated file is actually gonna... Well, I'm gonna put your, your name there. Right? Uh, so, here we go. Right? And seems I'm... The Bronco even Adila, I suppose. Well... <laughs> why not? Why not? Right? It sounds more professional than just, you know, hey, I'm the... <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> and yeah, uh, automat, all automat functions by default will put the, the copyleft thing here and the and the GPL tree in here. Like, yeah, deal with it, right? If you don't like it, uh, tinker with the source code and I will sue you. No, just kidding. Do, but do the, that legal homework yourself, right? Uh, I don't care for it. So anyhow, uh, this thing wrapped. Okay, and this video wrapped as well. So there we go. I th <laughs> I thought I closed everything for a second. Okay, so yeah, this video wrapped. So yeah, uh, I really do hope that uh, in the future. This thing is actually useful to someone, like uh, like you want to write console applications for Linux and you need like advanced uh, keyboard control without it being absolutely terrible. I hope uh, I hope this is actually useful for that, right? Like that's that's that was my end game. So yeah, that's it from me. Have a good one.